Good morning viewers, welcome. It's a lovely sunny day here in Durban and today we're going to cook a lovely lamb biryani which is on the menu. So I'm taking you to the early morning market so we can purchase some of the veggies. So come with me. Cooking with Sanusha is proudly brought to you by g -Bets. I drop another one nice wow. chilies now. Oh. Ginger can be used for so many purposes. Besides using for cooking for your <laughs> dishes, it's very medicinal use. You know, if you've got a cough, um, you need to get better, especially now with the COVID. Wow, Make ginger good. water, fresh ginger water, and if you ginger and if you get fresh turmeric, it looks just like this, which you can boil and drink it with honey and lemon. Excellent. And it's got such beautiful garlic here. Look at that. Look at this garlic. The purple garlic. Stunning. So we're going to use fresh ginger and garlic when we make the biryani. And using fresh ingredients, it will give a better flavor and a better taste. You can give me a kilo of this here, darling. Thank you so much. Take care. All the best with your business. Um, you know what we're driving and then guess what I'm doing the driving as you can see we're on our way to uh, the butchery to star butchery so we could get the lovely lamb to cook this biryani fresh lamb so you need to see what they're going to give us nice fresh tender meat I know you guys like meat not everybody so we're gonna make this uh, delicious biryani and hopefully uh, after me cooking this biryani I'll inspire you to want to cook so everybody I have taken three cups of rice a teaspoon of turmeric I put a, a cinnamon stick bay leaf maybe about two cloves, three cardamom to boil the rice so it gives it a nice flavor. Also to even give it a better flavor if you want it, you could add some saffron, pure saffron. Just a couple strands, just a wee strand, sorry. Just a few strands, just a few strands, see there? Wow, there it goes in. Okay, so that rice will boil, that will get ready and I've boiled a cup of dal, which is your normal pea dal. I've cleaned some garlic in, I put a bit of cumin and mustard seeds. And there's turmeric inside so that it can boil nicely. Okay, we'll put a little bit of turmeric, maybe like a half a teaspoon. Okay, so that will boil in the doll. The doll will get nice and soft. The next step is we've got the meat, which is more than a kilo of meat because I thought a family of four, maybe about one and a half kilos. There's it freshly washed, cut. Okay, I'm gonna just strain that water out a bit. Remember something, uh, when cooking any dishes, especially like meat dishes, you need to use fresh ingredients. And I prefer using fresh ginger and garlic because it neutralizes the acidity in any meat dish. And it gives it a nice flavor. So first step first, I'm going to add the ginger and garlic. Since we've got ginger here, we can even grate it, right? So what I did was, I cleaned the ginger. You can just clean this ginger. It's fresh you can see you can wash it clean it it's beautiful look at how fresh it is you can even grate it did you know that yeah if you don't have a liquidizer you can grate it if you've got a food processor you can put it in and like I said auntie said the last time we got the pestle and mortar here so we can stamp it <laughs> that's a great idea so when you making fresh ingredients I think would be most advisable to cook but for the working woman, you normally would grind your ginger and garlic ahead of time and you would make the ginger and garlic. So here we can just clean it. We'll rinse this up first. 
cut it up into smaller pieces. There we go. You normally would use a board or something, but this counter is perfect. It's a lovely top. I'm sure you can all see the ginger and the garlic. So you would actually use to a kilogram of or one and a half kilo of this uh, meat or meat, you would use two tablespoons of ginger and garlic. Because you've got to take out that flavor and give flavor into the meat. Yeah, make it lovely and tasty, you know. Delicious. I don't know, you decided you want hot or medium, but nobody told me anything. But anyway, I'll make it nice. And uh, the proof is when these guys taste the food, they can tell you how it is. How's the auntie's cooking? Yeah. So you would clean it. But if you have it already clean, that's fine. That's perfect. We could use fresh ginger and garlic. Now I'm going to rinse this here. And we're going to stamp it, okay? Another great idea is when you make the ginger and garlic, you can stamp your mint, your fresh coriander, all that in to make a interesting flavor to marinate the meat. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay? So we have the mint. I've cleaned it. We've washed it. Can you see how fresh it is? Okay. So we managed to get it in one of the local stores. You can buy mint anywhere. Or even in the garden. I've got mint growing in the garden. That's a great idea. Grow your own mint. Okay? So we're going to stamp that there. And then we're going to add the ginger and garlic inside. Yes. Lovely. This thing smells delicious. You can get the smell of that ginger. Isn't it? Hmm. Right. Now we can actually scoop it out. And I have extra here as well. Which we can add in. Which I made with turmeric. There we go. Throw that ginger and garlic inside. Okay, all the ginger and garlic inside. We're going to add your salt. Okay. That's a teaspoon. This is, I'm using coarse salt because it will melt in there. Two teaspoons of coarse salt. Okay. You must always watch your salt because you don't want to make the food salty as well. Yeah, it's a ginger and garlic. Now we need to grind the mint. Chop that mint up. But I think um, we can chop the mint. Oh, and what about the coriander? We'll have to do that as well. So you stamp that mint. Fresh ingredients is very important to get the taste, the flavor. You know, when you add extra mint in the biryani, I think fresh greens in the biryani actually brings out the, makes the biryani taste better. As opposed to using uh, a lot of, you can use spices, yes, but I think too much of anything is uh, good for, but anyway, mint is actually lovely. This mint smells, smells so divine. Beautiful. Right, so we've finished stamping your ginger, your, your fresh mint, and I've added coriander, or a whole bunch of coriander, by the way. And I've put in four green chilies, four of these green chilies here. This lovely chilies here. I use four of these chilies here, okay? So I'm just uh, pounding this nicely. Nice and fine texture. And watch what I'm going to do. Just take a watch. Check here how much comes out. Wow, can you believe how much of mint coriander? It smells divine. I'll get all the juices in there to marinate the meat nicely. And I've got fresh thyme, okay, which we've already washed. Put the fresh thyme. You will see how this biryani is going to taste. Fresh, fresh thyme. Check it out. Check auntie. Just like how she's mixing masala, auntie is just pulling the time. And we're going to use uh, the yogurt. Here we go. So normally for this type of meat here, you would use, uh, so I used a whole bunch of mint and a whole bunch of uh, coriander. And I've added four big green chilies, right? If you don't want it too spicy, you can add less. I'm going to add yogurt. Normally it's like half a cup of yogurt. Two big spoons. Here we go. Right. Then we're going to add half a uh, tomato. Say one tomato, two. Or two you can add. Fine. Perfect. Here we come to the exciting part the spices. 
So we're going to add a teaspoon of turmeric. Right? You can use your normal biryani masala if you have, which everything included. And I like crushed chilies. So there's a crushed chili. So we've got a teaspoon of crushed chilies. Right? I've got your um, cumin and dania mixed together. Cumin and dania mixed together. So your jeera and your dania is mixed together. A little bit of garam masala. Okay. And here I've got aniseed powder, cardamom powder. Wow, doesn't that look nice? Now, here's your chili, your Kashmiri chili. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of that to give it the color. Then, we've got to blend this with our hands, mix it with our hands. So now I'm adding some saffron inside the meat. Right? Normally what you can do with the saffron is you take boiling water and put the saffron in a, in a, in a small glass and put it in boiling water to dissolve and dissolve in the meat. Now I'm going to marinate this. Because now we put all the green ingredients, your mint, your thyme, your coriander. I put two, tea, two three teaspoons of Kashmiri chili, two teaspoons coriander and cumin, a little bit of garam masala. I've used your crushed chili. You can actually smell this. And you can actually see the color. If you want it more spicy, you can add more chilies up to you. But I've used a lot of greens, fresh greens. You know, I accentuated it on the greens. The coriander, the mint, the fresh ginger and garlic, everything. You can actually smell this. And we use grated tomato. I grated the tomato. Wow. Check it out. Remember something, when we're going to braise this, we're going to add a little extra masala when we're braising. And normally with the biryani, you can marinate this and leave it the night before. So when you come from work, you can just immediately cook the biryani. Or, if you want, you can marinate it an hour before and then cook the biryani. It doesn't matter. But this looks divine. So now I'm going to leave this to simmer a little bit. Then I'm going to start braising this and then get the potatoes ready for the biryani. So now the dough is almost boiled. It's almost ready for braising. So I'm going to take it off the stove before we... That will braise last. But first I'm concentrating on the biryani. I've got to get the potatoes ready. I've just cleaned the potatoes. I'm going to cut it and fry it. And I'm showing you what I'm going to do. And uh, the rice is boiling. It will be ready just now. I pre-cooked the lentils already. So it will make it easier for us. Lentils, you can use uh, one cup as well. One cup of lentils as well. Boil. Okay, this is a spider spoon. Okay, normally you know when you take out chips or whatever potatoes. So I'm going to lift it and I want to give it some more color before it goes into the oil. Okay, the egg yellow, here we go. Yeah, we don't want the oil to splash on us. That you've got to be very careful because this, you don't want to spoil the up to date potatoes. That is too special. Okay, put it in that oil to fry. See the color goes on the potato. All the potatoes are inside now. Okay, wow. But all the potatoes are inside. Cooking, the doll is almost boiled. We can braise that there. But before we braise that there, I want to take up the doll. We're going to braise the dough last, okay? We're going to do the preparation for the biryani. The dough is perfect. Look at it. Wow, it's so lovely. Oh, it won't take us long to braise. Beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Like butter it looks. <laughs> okay, see, it's fluttering. So I'm going to put this off slowly because I want to put a pot on to braise, cook that lamb. It's going to take time to cook that lamb. Let me just take this off the stove. Right, everybody. Can you see that potatoes? Ha! It's looking so yummy. Mm, I know when I fry potatoes in the kitchen, my son will say, Mommy, can I eat that potato? Now I'm going to put some oil in, sunflower oil, because you want for to marinate, the, to braise the mm, lamb. Okay? And sunflower oil. You can use butter ghee or butter if you like. Uh, that will give it a better taste. So maybe we should use some butter. That's a good idea. Here we go. Lovely mess. 
and grind it and put it in, it'll actually give a better flavor, which I think I maybe I can do some. You can add it. It gives the biryani a nice flavor and a nice taste. Can you see how that's cooking? Wow. That's it, folks. But now we've got to throw the onions in. We've got to throw the onions in to get it nice and brown. So I chopped the one onion, okay? One onion. One of those beautiful onions to get it nice and brown. So this biryani could look smashing and taste delicious. Uh, and don't forget to add some clove inside. Okay? Look at that we have. Uh, just that brown, the, the onions get nice and brown. Not forgetting that we need to add curry leaves inside. Wow, here's the curry leaves. I had them washed, okay? When you squeeze the curry leaves and you smell it, wow. It's fresh, fresh, fresh from the garden. So curry leaves is in there. Right? Let that cook lovely. Nice and brown. To get it nice and golden brown actually gives the biryani a nice taste. As opposed to eating like crunchy raw onions. So when it's nice and brown, it gives it a, a, a beautiful texture and a nice taste. Wow, look at this biryani. I like to put the saffron in because it needs to cook some. Hey, they say the spice is expensive, but you know what? If you want good things, it's fine. You don't necessarily have to put saffron if you can't afford to put the saffron. It's fine. Look at this anise. Let me cook this. Cinnamon stick. You can see the bay leaf, the aniseed. Wow, this the biryani is going to be delicious. Stunning. So you buy, you can purchase that biryani mix, the one that comes in the packet, with all the whole spices in. And all you do is a little, use a little bit of all that spice. You get the ready-made pre-packed one. Look at there. The butter, I use more of a butter in. I use sunflower oil to give it a nice uh, rich flavor and now I'm going to the onions are nice and brown can you see golden brown all nice and brown the texture wow now we're ready to add in. I'm gonna add some more because I only use two teaspoons of um, Kashmiri chili I'm just gonna add a little more when you're braising so it gives a roasted flavor a roasted delicious and I've got a little bit of garam masala a teaspoon of garam masala, some cumin. Okay, there we go. Wow, turmeric. Yeah, look at in there, Riyadh. Look inside. Wow, look at that. The color is changing. Now we're gonna throw the meat in. Can you smell that? It's roasty. So your spices are now roasted. Now we're going to throw in this lamb. Lovely marinated lamb. I'm not going to waste this, this, this is yogurt in here and all the spices. I'm going to put a little bit of water and then throw it in there. So it can cook slowly. Wow, look at that. Can you see? It's biryani. Lamb. Marinated. This will take about at least 45 to 5 minutes minutes to cook. I don't think lamb takes long at all. I'm going to put some water in here. Hold on a second. So we get the juices rolling. Yes, we are. Wow. All that juice. All that spice. We don't want to waste that spice. I like spicy food. I don't know about you, but I like spicy food. You know, my husband, he tells me, I punish him because I put cheese inside and I make the food hot, too spicy. Look at it. The greens make such a difference. Wow, I wish you could smell this. I wish you could smell it. Look at it. Look at this biryani. 
right, we are ready to take out these beautiful potatoes. So I'm gonna take out these potatoes. They're lovely, nice. The stove off here at the same time. Look at how golden, delicious they look. Appetizing. So when I put um, the potatoes in water, I put a teaspoon of egg yellow, and as you saw me taking it out, I put a little bit of more of egg yellow, so you know, to give it some color, and I'm gonna put some fine salt. Okay, so the potato will absorb that salt. It's in there now. There you go, we shook it up a bit. Wow. Yeah, lovely. Then we're gonna strain that rice. Okay. So the potatoes are ready. How do you know the potatoes are ready? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. The, the potatoes, how do you know potatoes are ready? It's crispy. It's just right. It's firm. Like how you fry potato chips. That's how you know they're ready. Wow. Lovely. Perfect. The rice is going to be ready to strain. I'm going to put all that rice. Okay, once we finish doing the rice is ready, the lentils are ready. And we pre-made rice as well, so we just boiled three cups of rice all together. So then we have enough rice for this biryani. Right everybody, so I use two tablespoons of butter ghee. If you can't afford our butter ghee, that's fine. You can use normal cooking oil. So you can put the onions in and you can make even with saffron if you can't afford saffron like how i use in the brand that's fine you don't have to use saffron don't say the auntie said must go buy the butter ghee and the saffron and use it to cook no it's fine whatever you have available sunfoil oil just use two tablespoons of that put your onions inside i'm going to put some curry leaves because now we're braising the dal fry remember that let's not forget what we're doing so i'm going to put that curry leaves inside some mustard seeds Jira it's because you want it to roast, you want it to uh, burst and have that roasting flavor when you're having the dal fry, which is amazing. And then, oh gosh, well, I'm not forgetting the beautiful dry chilies we purchased. All right, so you can split it in two or you can keep it whole, that's fine. You can even add extra uh, fresh garlic if you want in there, if you wish, but it's fine. So we're going to get this onions nice and brown for the dal fry before we put in the dal fry. Right, let it get simmered nicely, slowly, before we put it into the dal. We're not finished, we're not finished. And you can add, we've added turmeric in the dal, but you can put a little bit in the onion, just a quarter teaspoon, see that? There we go. You get nice and brown. Let it sizzle like that, see that? You know, sometimes people like stirring and stirring and stirring up to you I think I'll add two more cloves of garlic to give it a nice flavor I'll clean it for you the onions will be ready just now oh there's also another thing I wanted to show you but after I put the garlic then I'll show you what I'm going to do what makes a biryani very nice and very tasty is nutmeg that's a, another trick and not many people use nutmeg. I don't know why. But I feel nutmeg aids in digestion, in the taste, in the flavor. And you just grate the nutmeg. I'll show it to you just now what we're going to do. I'm going to slice this garlic in. Okay. Hopefully it's perfect. Anyway, the garlic is fresh and it's got a covering and it's clean. You know. Here we go. There we go. It's inside there. Let it cook nicely. It's going to make a lovely dal fry. It's getting nice and brown. It's looking lovely. You can add a little bit of uh, cumin uh, powder if you want, or would you like chili powder? But normally the dal fry is normally yellow. It's fine. I'm going to add a little bit half a tomato. Right. There we go. Inside that oil. Keep a sizzle in there. So it makes the dry fry tasty. Just a little bit of that masala. Just to give it a flavor. Because remember something, you want the dark fry to be the majority yellow. 
you don't want the color to change you want it to have that lovely rich yellow look and remember something you've got a spicy biryani so the dal fry has to be plain and simple just plain dal and rice oh that's so that's a meal on its own that's delicious on its own and it's, you know what it's actually a very healthy meal to have just plain dal and rice Yes. So now we're going to add some of the hing. You can add a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, because you don't want the gas, you know, and the doll. If you want it more softer than this, the doll, you can use a hand blender, but this is beautiful. It's perfect. It's looking lovely. Look at the color, the texture. Looks very appetizing, this doll. Okay. So let this doll give it one boil and then we just add the fresh coriander and then your doll is ready to eat and then now on the other hand what we have here is a lamb so what we're going to do is it's cooking nicely it's looking tender it's almost done you can see from the look of it meat I mean, it's smelling delicious. How does it smell, Riyad? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, you can see when it splits off. And you must know that this meat is lovely. But there's one thing I wanted to do now, which we're going to do right now, is your nutmeg. So, using nutmeg powder, I find that when it stays longer, it gets stale and it's got a funny taste. Here, there's a special covering, outer covering, that keeps the nutmeg fresh. So you can see when you purchase nutmeg, it's got a white outer covering. So the trick is to grate some nutmeg onto this lamb to give it a lovely flavor. So like I said, we use Kashmiri chili, like almost two tablespoons of Kashmiri chili. We use cumin and coriander. I use a mixture of uh, cinnamon, aniseed powder. There we go, I'm grating the nutmeg. Of this lamb biryani. Wow. A quarter of this nutmeg. Nutmeg is also good because it aids in digestion. So, biryani is normally a layered system. So, I'm because I'm using a huge pot, I'm just going to make it into one layer. I'm not going to make it to three and four layers because it's a nice size pot that I'm using. If you don't have a, a big large size pot, you could use a smaller size and then you can make it in two layers as follows. So the lamb is perfectly cooked. See, yeah. So I didn't cook it dry. You can see there's still gravy. Mmm, this is smelling so divine. I'm going to throw this entire lamb inside this huge pot. Okay, here we go. Wow, looks amazing. And I'm not going to waste the juices, you know, like I said. So I'll just put a little water there then, you know. Because at the same time, I've got to reset the oven now. Let me just do that quickly. So then we can leave the biryani to steam. Here we go. Perfect. It's on. I'm going to throw the potatoes in. Watch me. Okay. Put the potatoes in. Here we go at the bottom. It will all steam nicely. Am I making you hungry? Wonder. Here we go. We've got the lentils, which we're gonna put here on the top. The lentils are ready. It's too much. That's enough. You don't have too much of lentils. Some people like extra lentils. Some people like less lentils. It depends on you as an individual. And last but not least, we're going to put the rice on top. Right? I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Oopsie. Let's see. I'm going to use my hand. Okay. So I pre-cooked two cups of rice before and then I cooked another cup. Here we go. You don't want to have less rice and more meat. You want to have it because there's enough rice for everyone to eat. Here we go. Perfect. And here comes another trick that I want to show you. And normally on the top of the biryani, they fry extra onions and anything they put on the top of the biryani. But it's not necessarily to do that. 
But if you want, that's fine. You can try extra onions. So I'm going to put the egg yolk on the top. And then you're going to see what happens after that. Right. This is another trick. So I use a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of egg yellow. Spruce it up there. You can use a spoon. I've washed my hands, don't worry. I think feeling, touching, the, the feeling in the food is very important. The love, the energy that goes inside. Now, can you see that color? The texture we've created in this briyani. If you don't have butter, like I said, and you can't afford it, that's fine. You can use rama. Rama is perfect. So I like using butter, just a quarter piece. So I put it on top so then it steams nicely. Yummy biryani, delicious. You can fry some onions and put on top if you want. And then you put a half a glass of water on top of here. So then we can put this biryani in the oven to steam. For about 30 35 minutes wow this biryani is ready check it out it's steaming so now we're just going to dish this biryani out on the plate and then we'll show you when we're done this feature was proudly brought to you by gbets